Hello, my name is Brian. I own a small computer repair shop in South Florida, and today we are working on a MacBook. Not a MacBook Pro, but a standard MacBook manufactured in 2007. It's got the issue with the display that a lot of people have um, uh, problems with. You can see, I don't know if you can see it, but uh, it's hard to see in this, but here we go. Um, there's video now, but if I move the screen, ah, there it goes, goes away. And then if I go this way, eventually, sometimes, yes, it comes back, as you can see. So we're moving the, the hinge, and then this, the display goes out. Uh, this is a result of a bad inverter or a bad inverter cable. Most likely it's the cable. Um, so, I don't like doing these, but it is what it is. So, we're going to do this together. We're going to fix it. Need some spudgers. Okay, these are black sticks. I'll put links to those in my description so you can buy your own. Apple actually uses these in the in the genius area in their shop. Um, I have a couple of screwdrivers. These are one's a flathead, one's a 3.5 millimeter Phillips head screwdriver. I have a dental tool. Don't drop yours on your client's MacBook. That's bad. Uh, dental tool. Some compressed air in case we need it. Some alcohol swabs just in case. And my hands. Alright, let's do this. I'm going to go ahead and flip the MacBook over. We're going to use our spudger. We're going to unlock the battery. Take this battery out. No power sources allowed. Uh, and we are going to now open up the lid. Then we need to remove this bezel. This bezel is held on with some inferior clips that um, Apple designed, they're these gray clips, they're terrible, and they break and they bend and they're awful. So anyway, be careful, be very gentle, be very ginger with this process, okay? I'm going to use a newer spudger, one that's got more of a nice tight edge, and I'm going to go right here, not, not here, but in between, in between the top you know, this, this, these two pieces of plastic right here. I'm going to go on the outside of it, and I'm going to start popping those clips. And I'm hopefully not going to break them. Unfortunately, I probably will, because they're not really designed to be taken apart. Um, but as you can see, even though I've done this a hundred times, I'm taking my time with it, because God forbid I break those clips because it's much, much harder to put this thing back together if you break those clips. Have I made myself abundantly clear that those clips suck and to be general with them? Okay. All right. There's a little bit of adhesive, too, I think, in some of these older units. We're going to try to do our best and get that adhesive off. And this bezel's pretty flexible. I mean, it's depends on how old it is, but... All right, here we go, here we go, yes, all right, making good progress. I haven't broken any clips yet. You'll know when you break one. These little pieces of plastic will fly out. All right, and notice, notice where my spudger is. See this? It's on the outside, We're going from the outside. We're not going from this side. We're going from the outside in. This is pretty good. Alright, rubber cement there. Alright, we're down to the nitty gritty at the bottom. And down here, this is all adhesive. I don't think there's any clips down here. Maybe there is. Yeah, maybe. Oh, yes. No gray clips, but there is a little thing down there that sort of the best way I've known to do this is go in from the side use your spudger and work towards the middle towards the logo where it says MacBook and then do that from this side too so go from the outside towards the middle 
on the bottom because you really don't want to break this bezel. I'm imagining they're expensive. Ah, uh, yes. Got it. There's the infamous gray clips. They're terrible. Um, and what we're going to do before we put this all back together, we're going to take those gray clips off and we're going to reseat them into the screen. And then that way when we go to put it back on, it's just snap, crackle, pop. Put it right back together. Okay. Now that we've got the bezel off, we need to grab our 3.5 millimeter flat, or I'm sorry, Phillips head screwdriver. Get our bin out so we can put our screws away properly so we stay organized. There's only three of them. We're going to pull these three screws right straight away. Pull it out. Then underneath this white piece of plastic here is, is our inverter and our cable for that inverter. Oh, but it's not that simple. To get this thing out, you have to bend this all the way back and you have to pry. That's why I use my little dental tool. To pry this piece of plastic up and out. Okay. And you're going to probably damage this a little bit. Let's try it with this flathead. It's inevitable. All right. You're going to just be gentle, but you need to bend this all the way back. It's not really designed to come out this way, but otherwise you have to take the whole thing apart to get to the inverter. Insanity, I say, and we will not do it. We will not. We will take a shortcut, hopefully. All right. So as you can see, I'm using my plethora of tools. I'm using my flathead, I'm using my dental tool, I'm using my hands, and I'm going to try and pry from one side. I may have to spin this around, get up over here, because it looks like this side has sort of unjammed itself. Poor, poor design. From a repair standpoint. Get it unclipped, maybe I can pop this bottom off here. Let's try that. Just get it. We're just working this. Grab our new spudger here. There we go. Let's get her loose. All right, I'm running my spudger up behind the back side of that just to pop it loose to get it free a bit. Because really what our goal is to get this white piece uh, removed or popped out. And now she's a lot looser than she was before. Ah, there you go. You gave up your ghost. Oh, yes. Come to Papa. Now. That, that, that's the hardest part of the whole job right there. Let's take a gander, shall we? This guy right here is our inverter. This little circuit board looking thing. And the pink and yellow wires are the inverter power cables. Okay. And this is the inverter controller cable, sends power off. I highly doubt that the inverter is bad. Seeing as how when we move the screen, there's flexibility in the line. Somewhere it's getting attached or disconnected. We sort of have to figure that out. I mean, the easy thing to do would be just to go ahead and swap out the whole inverter, call it a day. But I don't think that's the answer. I, I think that the answer is somewhere in this cable here. So, in order to figure that out, I'm going to plug the inverter back in. Oh, 
I'm going to plug the power cable back in. Right? And I'm going to put the battery back in and we're going to play with this cable and see where the, the display sits. Some of you might say that's crazy talk. I've had Apple technicians tell me not to do it that way and um, you know it's dangerous and you could damage something. It's a 2007 MacBook. Okay. Um, you know the cost of the LCD is like a hundred bucks. The inverter is I don't even know how much. We're going to figure this out the cheapest way possible. And we're not going to damage the laptop from doing it. Although you are taking a risk whenever you power up a computer with any of its protective components removed. So just be aware of that. But in this case, I feel totally justified in doing it this way. Alright, so now that we've got the battery back in, on the MacBook, and we're going to see if we get any display that looks as if we are, and we have backlight, and I'm going to go ahead and move the cable. try to make it fail. How about we move the whole display? Let's see if we can make it fail. Fix it. Boy, it sure does look like it's working now, doesn't it? Huh. Well, not really happy with that because I don't really know how to make it fail at this point. Uh, it turned off. But I think it turned off because we closed it too much. I'm going to say yes, that it is the cable. It's this inverter cable. And it was possibly a loose inverter plug, alright, in this case. By plugging it in and unplugging it, we solve the problem. Normally, I would say go ahead and replace the whole thing, but because of the age of the laptop, it doesn't make sense to do that. I think in this case, we're going to go ahead and reassemble it and see if we can't make it fail again. Okay, so now we got our uh, white piece of plastic back in. And, uh, you can see by repositioning that cable, we no longer have this issue with the inverter. Uh, is it fixed 100%? Eh, you know, it, it may come back, uh, but the client may not want to pay to have the full cable pulled out and redone. So, we are going to go ahead and um, Put our screws back and then we're going to go through the process of putting those clasps, clasps back into the screen and popping that all back on so you can see what that looks like. Um, you know, you, when you're doing a repair, you sort of have to gauge, you know, how much money does this person want to put into this machine. And by me temporarily adjusting the cable, I made for a very inexpensive repair on this machine. Is it the right way to do it? Probably not. Um, is it justified to do it the right way on a 2007 MacBook? Um, I doubt it. I mean, by the time you're investing in the money in the cable and all of that and you know the inverter possibly to pull this whole thing apart, the labor, um, you know you're halfway to a new machine. So we're gonna go ahead and um, leave it like this and we'll test it. We're not going to give it back to the client just yet, but we'll test it. Um, now what we're going to do is we're going to actually pop these little black, or I'm sorry, they're gray um, clasps off of this, off of the bezel, 
and we're going to put them back into the screen where they go like this face first. So I popped it off and now I'm going to push it right where it belongs right back into the screen. There's a little depression there and so you can see what I'm talking about right there. You see how I got it back in? And what I'm going to do is I'm going to do all of those. Okay. And then when we go to snap the bezel back on, we just place the bezel up and snap it in to place. Be careful with these. They will break on you. They will pop. When you pry them up, they'll pop off and they'll fly all over the room and you may not be able to relocate them because of their size. So I'm just taking my dental tool here and I'm putting my finger up underneath and I'm pulling them out one by one. This one there. Just be gentle. Alright, so I've got all my little gray clips off of my bezel and they are now in the indentations inside of our uh, screen here and all we really need to do now is line everything up and snap it all back together okay and kinda go in a, uh, in a uniform fashion as possible um, and get it to kinda all snap crackle pop back together push down and hear the clips kind of snap in place take a look all right so let's give it another try the screen does not turn off okay um, yeah I'm gonna call it fixed so the inverter cable was uh, being pinched. We got lucky. We didn't have to replace the inverter cable, which was nice. Um, so is this the right way to fix it? Probably not. But we got it fixed for a good price, and uh, I don't think replacing all that all that equipment probably would have been worth it. You may disagree with me. That's fine. But uh, this is the way we do things in the real world. So, anyhow, thank you so much for watching my video. I really appreciate it. And please like. Please subscribe. And make sure you put any comments or questions uh, below. Thanks so much and have a great day.